how to do what we call a reverse search in tactical arbitrage. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to reverse search. We're going to click on reverse search. Guys, this is the third segment um, in this. We've got a, a series going. We just we just been teaching tactical arbitrage. So look in, look down in the uh, description if you didn't catch parts one and two. But first, let's talk about what a reverse search is. A reverse search, instead of you telling the software to search a particular store, you're telling the software to, to search a particular Amazon category. Okay. Now, most of your things that you would want to toggle through, such as your cash and disabling the duplicate checker and things like that, you can find that those are kind of the same whether you're doing a product search or a reverse search. But what you want to make sure of, you want to make sure, I, I would set my cache for five days. The bigger the cache, the faster the, the, your searches are going are gonna to run, but the less recent the, the results are going to be. Because basically the software is aggregating all of the search results from all of our searches. And if you want to pull from that, you, you the advantage is you'll get your, res, your results back quicker. But here's where you really want to focus when you start getting into your reverse search. Okay. In most cases, you either want to do a keyword search if there's a particular brand that you want. Uh, you'll, you, you want to scan best sellers. That, that's typically where I'm at. You can go most wished. You can do uh, movers and shakers. If you want to do a reverse search and you happen to know that that store ID, this is a way that you can do it. It'll allow, I think, six searches per uh, per uh, pay period or whatever. I just forget how that works, but you can do a reverse search. But in, in the case of this example, we want to show you just how to scan best sellers. Now, once you see that there, now you can go, you can get pretty granular. For example, one of my favorites you guys already know is grocery and gourmet. And once you have that, well, you can go all grocery and gourmet or you can get down to certain things that fall under grocery and gourmet. I like snack food. So we can, and we can go, you can even go deeper than that. I sell pretzels. I sell popcorn, things like that. You can get into that. Another thing you that's pretty neat. Now you'll notice you've got, 802 stores selected. Well, maybe you just want to that you you don't want all these. Okay, you can deselect those and you might say, "Hey, let's look at like today, we were looking at Target, right?" And if I could spell <laughs> and I still can't. Oh, there's Target. Right? And you could, you could pick the stores that you like. In, in this case, I would probably go Dollar General. I would go Target. I would go Walmart. Uh, There's just a lot of, obviously, you've got over 800 stores, okay? You can, uh, let's see, if you had saved filters, this is where you would select that. I would definitely name the search. Go ahead and name the search. And here's the reason why. Let me see if I can. The reason I say name your search is because what happens is this. Let me see if we can. So this is what it looks like when you go into your search manager. Here's where you can look at the searches that you have currently running, searches that have been completed. And with a reverse search, a lot of times you don't know what the search was, what category was it? You know, it, sometimes it's going to be obvious once you start looking in the results. Sometimes it's not. Now, you take a product search. 
and you can see the store so you know what got searched. But when it comes to reverse search and you're going back later and you've got, you know, five searches and it's like, well, which one was that? That's why I suggest coming here at the time that you're setting up the search and naming the search. Now, remember, guys, you run that search once and you can always come back and you can rerun that search. OK, you could even save that search. Right. Name it. And then you'll be able to come and do a, a save. I've got 43 searches that are saved. I never have to set up anything. You can set it up to auto run, guys. So you can make this as automated as you want. Yes, you've got to put the time in to go through those results. But you're literally panning for gold. It's it's worth it. Back to our search. And again, all your filters. Those are things we covered in the other other video. Guys, you already know, I like a 90 day average and I will look at anything uh, up to 500,000 because I want to go wide enough that I have enough results to look for. OK, and of course, you've got your other areas, the profit and return on investment, all of that stuff. We cover in the lightning course. And also remember, guys, if you have questions about this, leave a comment.